So today we are going to be planting up the rest of the bulb lawn here. It's never really finished, but if you recall, this was the last area that we planted. So we planted those two areas a year before. And this one we planted last fall, but only with 10,000 bulbs. That's a lot of bulbs, but compared to those two places, each of those places got about 35,000 bulbs. So we had about a third less and it was all done by hand. So when we were doing it, we kind of put a lot of bulbs on that side. And by the time we got to this area, we barely had any bulbs left. So. If we looked at over overheads from this past fall, uh, this area was kind of lacking and I didn't really buy too many bulbs, but I think the one um, that I wanted the most of was the Tulipa sylvestris. I'm surprised that I really like this one as much, but there's just that cheery yellow flower and looking at it from over that side, looking over, it's just really beautiful. So I think I'm gonna do like a, a swath of tulip bulbs down here. And then I got a new species of tulip and this will also emerge around the same time. This is called Tulipa bronze charm. This is smaller than Tulipa sylvestris. It only grows to about six inches tall max. And it has this kind of peachy yellow bronzish color. And I got three bags of these from High Country Gardens. I thought that was a really nice tulip. We'll try it out. It's not planted in the other lawns, um, but I thought this would be a nice place to try it out. So you can see I don't have that many bulbs. In fact, I probably should have invested on a couple more bags of the Tulipa sylvestris. But what we're gonna do here, since you know this is probably the easiest bulb planting that I've done so far, because putting in 10,000 by hand, even though I had help with Joey and Kia, it's, it's a lot of work. So this I could actually take my time with. So what I'm gonna do and what I found out is like last year, I think we had a squirrel, maybe dig up a few, not, not that many. And I was chatting with some folks at the perennial plant conference that I was speaking at. And somebody had approached me after we had presented the, the bulb lawn that we did. And she said, you know, I went over to the Netherlands and I found out that they said soaking your bulbs in tonic water could prevent any kind of squirrels or animals from digging up your bulbs. So I was like, well, that's really interesting. So I kind of consulted with Peggy Ann who had also helped on the bulb lawn here and she was able to help facilitate some of the bulbs that we got from the bulb lawn. And I said, what do you think about that? Because obviously she spent a lot of time with folks in the Netherlands talking about bulbs. And she said, you know what? I can't imagine that modern day tonic water works, but maybe tonic water with real quinine in would actually be a preventative. So she hadn't heard that before, but I think like once we chatted about it, we figured, yeah, maybe soaking the bulbs in, in quinine. Um, the other thing she said could work is this Bobex deer repellent, which it does not smell delightful. It's a, it's a bit of a putrid smell and and when the woman came up to me and she said she soaks the bulbs, it's like, I don't mean soaking the bulbs for like an hour. I mean for like a hot second. But with this, this is a spray bottle. I wouldn't even want to soak my bulbs in Bobex because you wouldn't even want to touch it afterwards. It just smells so bad. 
But I think um, there's a few things that you could do to prevent rodents. Uh, even though some of these bulbs only need to go down maybe two or three inches, putting them down a little bit deeper, maybe four to five inches instead. Um, I found that putting like a manure over the top of them, because even the grass, if there's like a little hole in the ground and it doesn't really cover up very easily because the clay, for instance, doesn't cover up the top of it very easily. So I found putting that over the top of it and burying it a little bit more. And if you wanted to go and spray it or spray the bulb even before you put the, uh, the soil on top or the manure on top, then that could also prevent anything from wanting to dig it up. And this doesn't last all the time, but it also doesn't wash out in the rain very easily. So what I'm gonna do is basically drill some holes in this area. And so I have uh, one of those power augers. So I put it onto a power dr drill and I think that's in reverse. So I wanna make sure it's this way and just find a, some spot, you know, where there's not too much grass. We actually came in here and mowed this, but we gotta, we're gonna mow it a little bit more. Oh, there it goes. I put it in reverse. That's the only thing you gotta watch out for. So just like that, you have a little hole. I'm gonna put some bulb tone in here. Look at this little woolly bear coming in. Coming in, little woolly bear. Look at that guy, so cute. They become Isabella tiger moths. They, they're now in their, their way of hibernating. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of bulb tone in there and I wouldn't do this for all the tens of thousands of bulbs. You'll notice I actually put, we put a bunch of bulb tone in there when we actually buried the bulbs uh, under underground, but I, I would just only recommend it if you have small amounts of bulbs typically. And then you could usually just put one or two in here. Typically, if I was planting more than one species, so if I had anemone and crocus and aranthus and galanthus and all that kind of stuff, I'd, I don't wanna put two tulips together because then it'll be like that. But if I had a crocus, which blooms in like February, March with a tulip, then I think that would normally be fine. So I'm just gonna put this clay back in. And then what I'll do is open this up. And like I said, I'm not gonna put bobex in, but I just wanted to bring that out just to show you that that's an option because some folks did ask about critters digging stuff up. So here we go, this, and this gives me a way that I know that I actually planted something here. And that grass is just gonna cover this right back up in one season. So even though you have like a little hole in your ground, it's not that big of a deal. And then just gonna continue on with it, making sure that I don't hit any woolly bears along the way. One thing I will mention about this, if you want to do, if you want to do this, it's better if the grass is sheared to maybe three inches. This is at around four inches, but your auger will sometimes get uh, wrapped up in grass. Now, if you come up here the next morning and you see these dug up, then you may actually want to go out there again with your bulbs and spray that Bobex on the bulbs. Or, you know, try the tonic water, but don't get the cheap stuff. Get the stuff with the, with the real medicine in it, not the, not the stuff that has just been pumped with like carbon. <laughs> <laughs> 